my name is Jin Luen Quingxin. Right now, I'm going to give you a scientific presentation about phosphate removal from wastewater. Alright, so let's get started now. Alright, here is, here is my presentation slide. Alright, let's move on. Let's start with the introduction. What is phosphate, phosphate and phosphorus? Phosphorus, which is usually in the form of phosphate, is a normal part of the environment. It occurs in the form of phosphate containing rocks and as the excretory of decay and products of plants and animals. Human contributions to the phosphorus cycle result primarily from the use of phosphorus containing detergents and fertilizers. All right, the effect in the environment from phosphate. The increased load of phosphorus in the environment as a result of human activities has been a matter of concern for more than four decades. The primary issue has been to what extent additional phosphorus has contributed to the eutrophication of lakes, ponds, and the other bodies of water. Alright, so let's determine the meaning of eutrophication. Eutrophication is the ecosystem response to the addition of artificial or natural substances such as nitrates and phosphates through fertilizers or sewage to an aquatic system. Scientists have long recognized that increasing level of phosphorus are associated with eutrophication, but the evidence for a direct cause and effect relationship is not entirely clear. Eutrophication is a complex process involving nitrogen and carbon as well as phosphorus. The role of each nutrient and the interaction among them is still not entirely clear. In any case, environmental engineers have long explored methods for the removal of phosphorus from wastewater in order to reduce possible eutrophication effects. Primary and secondary treatment techniques are relatively inefficient in removing phosphorus with only about 10% extracted from raw wastewater in each step. Thus, special procedures during the tertiary treatment stage are needed to remove the remaining phosphorus. There are two methods of phosphate removal, which, which are biological. It, this method uses bacteria and the chemical method, which is more popular. Alright, let's move on to the process. For the biological method, bacteria form in the activated sludge produced during secondary treatment, which is uh, right here. We put the insulin into the into the machine and then the coagulant will make the compound or liquid inside to be solid like make the phosphate compound to be solid and then the primary cell dimension uh, if you put the sediment out the sediment of the phosphate out then we go to the secondary sediment the phosphate compound will come out again in this spot For the biological method, um, bacteria forming the activated sludge produced during secondary treatment have an unusually high tendency to absorb phosphorus. If these tre if these bacteria are used in the tertiary treatment stage, they are very efficient in removing phosphorus from wastewater. The sludge produced by this bacterial action is rich in phosphorus and can be separated from the wastewater. Leaving water with a concentration of phosphorus only about 5% of its original level. However, a more popular method of phosphorus removal is chemical. A compound is selected that will react with phosphate in wastewater. 
forming an insoluble product that can then be filtered off. The two most common substances used for this process are alum, aluminum sulfate, and lime, or calcium hydroxide. And alum treatment works in two different ways. Some aluminum sulfate reacts directly with phosphate in the wastewater to form insoluble aluminum phosphate. At the same time, the aluminum ion hydrolyzes in water to form a thick gelatinous precipitate of aluminum hydroxide that carries phosphate with, with it as it settles out of solution. The addition of lime to wastewater results in the inform formation of another insoluble product, calcium hydroxyapatite, which also settles out of solution by determining the concentration of phosphorus in wastewater. These chemical treatments can be used very precisely. Exactly enough alum or lime can be added to precipitate out the phosphate in the water. Such treatments are normally effective in removing about 95% of our phosphorus originally present in a sample of wet water. About the so the conclusion is the, the main reason of removing phosphate from wastewater is to prevent the eutrophication in order to save the environment. From the information, it shows that both biological and chemical methods are efficient to work on the phosphate removing process. These processes end up the low oxygen and the other negative effects of, of eutrophication. It protects the pond and lake ecology. Thank you for listening for my presentation. This is this presentation is presented by Jin Rung Greensing.